Equations are fairly straightforward. Anytime you have a mathematical relationship that can be described by an equation, you can use the functionality in SOLIDWORKS to express that as a dimension. We have a uh, child's toy which starts with a big ring at the bottom and then it's a cone in the center that you stack rings on. This is a little more geometrically complicated than it seems at first because each ring, the first ring in particular, has to be tangent to the base. It also has to be tangent to the inside cone and to the next ring, which has to be also tangent to the inside cone and the next ring and so on. So everything starts from the first ring. And the first ring does not have an equation that's driving it. It's just the number that you specify. So it's the variable in the equation. And the second ring, as you can see by the sigma in front of it, is driven by something. So let's click on this. And it brings up the modify dialog box that you're used to putting regular dimensions in. But you can put an equation in here. Now I've created a global variable called multiplier and the multiplier determines how fast the diameter of the rings decreases. Okay, so that's going to help determine the slope of the inside cone. So we have a an equation that is the first ring diameter times this multiplier gives us the second ring diameter. Okay, and likewise, we'll go down, we'll step down f to the next ring, which will depend on the second ring and, and so on. So this sort of thing is actually going to take up some time in your, in your sketch because it has to solve one and then solve the other and then solve it it can't solve them in any other order it has to solve them in this particular order and then it has to solve the sketch and with the sketch relations that determines the position of all the rings and from there that determines d4 which is the center to center stack height of the rings now this is something that's driven it's a it's a driven dimension you can see it's kind of gray so it's driven by the geometry. And then from that, we calculate the overall height, which just adds 3 quarters of an inch to whatever this sketch has calculated that dimension needs to be. Now, if we wanted to add something to this, this is how you add to or modify a, uh, an equation. I just put a plus sign in here, and I'd click on the first ring diameter and what this does is it adds it adds that ring diameter to the overall stack height but unfortunately you may find that this something like this also will get you in trouble because you can create a circular relationship and that's what SOLIDWORKS thinks is going on with this exclamation point it's not really a circular relationship because all of the dependent things stay on the same side of the, equa the equation and the de dependent variables never become the independent variables. So this is essentially how equations work in sketches and you can take this on to uh, you know other parts of of the software using it in feature parameters and things like that. The equation driven curve and this is under the spline heading. You can also find it under the curve heading although like as we've mentioned before uh, this is one of those cases where SOLIDWORKS has their terminology messed up and this is not a curve feature at all it's actually a sketch which is which is why you find it under the spline uh, the equation driven curve will enable you to uh, write, in, write an equation so let's Let's uh, say the implication is that there's an equal sign here. So uh, y is a function of x is equal to x to the 0.3 power, and then put in some parentheses. 
divided by 5 minus 3. Okay, and this will be good from, uh, say, x equals 2 to x equals 20. All right, it's, SolidWorks is going to give us a little preview here of what that looks like. And uh, we can zoom in on that. Okay, now that's not a very interesting curve, maybe not even very believable. So let's, uh, let's change this from 0.3 to 1.2. Ah, we can see how that changes. Uh, you can change it again to a 2, so that's a little too much so 1.6 there and that that adjusts the uh, adjusts the curve to our liking and uh, I can go back and edit just by clicking on the curve that brings up the property manager and I can drive this again for this constant here you could use a uh, global variable instead of keying it in as a constant. In fact, for all of these actual numbers in here, you could use a global variable.